What are you looking at? Hey, hey, this is Dave Osborne from KidsGuitarAcademy.com coming at you with another free guitar tutorial. This time, I'll be showing you how to play the opening one theme to Full Metal Malchemist Br Did I get that right? No, it was Full Metal, I said Malchemist. Say Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. <laughs> full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Say Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. No. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. No. Say Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay, so apparently I'm not the only one that has trouble saying it. But the important thing is, is that I can play it and I can show you how. Now this song is more of a late beginner, early intermediate level song. So if you're just a beginner trying to play it, it might be somewhat challenging. Now if you're a beginner who wants to level up to intermediate level, in the quickest way possible, I highly recommend checking out the Kids Guitar Academy Ultimate Beginner Guitar Course. It was designed to take beginners to intermediate level in a fast and fun way. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, also, don't forget to download your free professional guitar tabs for this song so you can print them out and work with them as we go through the tutorial. All right, so let's get started playing some Full Metal Alchemist, or Malchemist, whatever you want to say, Brotherhood, right now. All right, so this song contains four sections. You have an intro, a verse, a pre-chorus, and a chorus. Now the entire song is in the key of E minor. So if you can learn how to play an E minor scale, you're gonna get this song down a lot faster since all of the notes from the song come directly from that scale. So if you don't know that scale already, let me show it to you now. All right, so to play this scale, we wanna position our hand in the seventh position of the guitar neck. Now that just means that the first finger is gonna be lining up with the seventh fret, and we're gonna to try to keep our hand there. We're gonna start out with our first finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string, and we're gonna play three notes on that string. Seventh fret, ninth, tenth. So that's fingers one, three, four. It can be kind of difficult to reach that pinky, but just do your best. Now after we play those three notes, we go up one string to the fourth string, and we do the same exact thing. First finger, third, fourth. Now we go up to the next string, the third string, and do first finger on seven, third finger on nine. Now to the second string, we're gonna go first finger, second on eighth, pinky on tenth. And the same exact thing on the first string. First finger, second, pinky. Here's what it looks like. Once you get to that top note, you want to play it in reverse, starting from the highest note to the lowest. So we'll start with the pinky note on the 10th fret, to the 8th, to the 7th, and do the same thing on the 2nd string. 3rd string is 3rd finger to 1st, and then pinky to the 10th fret, 9th, 7th and same thing on the fifth string. Now you want to be able to play the scale up and down playing each note once like this.
So that's your seventh position E minor scale. And all the notes from the song are gonna just come right from the notes of that scale. All right, so let's get this intro down. Now the intro starts with a short quote from the chorus of the song, and then it goes into a short instrumental. Here's phrase one. So all of those notes are coming right out of that E minor scale that I showed you earlier. I'm keeping my hand in the seventh position so that I'm playing any note that's on the seventh fret with the first finger, any note that's on the eighth with the second, and so on. Now when we look at the phrase, we want to break it down. The phrase actually starts with two similar passages. In fact, they're exactly the same except for the last note which changes in each passage. You're going to start with the third finger on the ninth fret. Here's the first passage. Here's the second. So you see only that last note is changing. So the first thing you want to do is just practice these passages. Now you go into the second half of the phrase. You're just stay on that seventh fret note that you just played, but you're going to play it again as you play a string of notes on the second string and then landing on the fourth string ninth fret. Okay, now you want to string those two parts together so that you can play the phrase all the way through. Once you're able to do that, try playing along with me. Now one thing you're going to notice is that when I start this, I'm starting on the AND after four. Now what that means is see, usually we start on the one beat, the first beat, like one, two, three, four, and then we start playing. But in the case of this phrase, we start right after the four. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and one. So let's look at phrase two. Okay, so for the first half of phrase two, we're going to start with that same ninth fret note on the third string, and we're going to cross back and forth between strings two and three. So that's the first thing I would get down. Now for the second part, we're going to start on that last note we hit on the 7th fret of the 3rd string, and we're going to jump up with the pinky to the 10th fret of the 2nd string. So there's a little bit of a jump there that you'll have to practice. Once we're there, we stay on the 2nd string, landing on the 1st string 7th fret. So that was... And then we have this small grouping of 3 notes that we finish with at the end. Once again, I'm going to try to stay in position and use pinky for 10, middle finger for 8, and then third finger for 9. So once you've put those parts together, practice playing it through, and then try playing with me. Here it is. One, two, three, four, and one. Alright, so let's take a look at phrase 3. So this is the instrumental portion of the intro that happens right at the end of the intro before the verse. Here's how it sounds. Okay, 
So phrase three consists of two similar passages. In fact, the only difference between them is the last note. You're gonna start by sliding your third finger up on the fourth string to the ninth fret. So just start a few frets below the ninth and keep the finger pressed down as you slide up. Now you're gonna cross over to the third string. Keep the first finger down as you go up to the twelfth fret, eleven, and then seven, all on the third string. Now repeat that same exact thing, except instead of ending on the seventh fret, you're going to end on the 8th fret. Now the guitars in the song apply some short bends to that last note. Which you can get by just keeping the finger pressed down as you pull the string in a downward motion. Now if you're playing this on acoustic guitar, that could be a little bit difficult. You can get the same effect by just playing the 9th fret to the 8th over and over. In any event, here's how that sounds. All right, so once you've got those two passages down, put them together and then play along with me. One, two, three, four. Alright, so let's work out the verse. The verse consists of three phrases with the third phrase repeating itself once. Here's phrase one. Okay, so once again, we're just staying in the seventh position, playing notes from the E minor scale. And this phrase starts just like the other ones with the third finger on the ninth fret of the third string. Now we're going to play that note and then we're going to go up to the second string and play a whole string of notes on the seventh and eighth frets. So we're just kind of going back and forth. So you just got to watch your timing on those notes. Watch particularly for the ring out lines like this one here that kind of tells you that that note is going to be ringing out before proceeding into the next note. Now once you've got the timing right on that, you're going to travel to the fourth string, ninth fret, and you're going to play these last few notes between the third finger and the pinky. So that can be a little bit tricky to coordinate, so you just have to work on that might be helpful to keep the third finger in place and then add the pinky. Alright, so once you have that together, try playing it along with me. Now for this passage, we're actually going to start right after the third beat. So it'll actually count one, two, three, and... So notice I started right after the third beat. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. So phrase two is very similar to phrase one. Here's how it sounds. So it starts out exactly the same, but right here, we go up to the first string, seventh fret, before moving to the third string, ninth fret, and then ending on the second string, going between the seventh and eighth frets. So one thing I would do is I would practice that ending part. Okay, once you've got that, play it along with me slow. Once again, we're starting right after beat three. One, two, 
three. Awesome. All right, so this leads us into phrase three, which you're actually gonna play through twice. Now for phrase three, we're gonna be on the fourth string, starting on the seventh fret. And we're essentially going to be playing notes between the seventh and ninth frets on both the fourth string and the third string. <laughs> Okay, so we're going back and forth between those notes. Here's how the phrase sounds. All right, so here's the first segment of the phrase. That's what you want to play up to first. One thing you want to do here is just watch the timing, especially on these third and fourth notes as they're played quicker. And once you play those, you stay on the ninth fret, travel up to the third string, before landing on the fourth string ninth fret. So here's that first segment slow. Now as you go on to the next part of the phrase, you're basically quoting the same idea. There's just no quick notes here in this part. So it's sort of an echo of what you did in the first part. Okay, now the next thing I do is string those two segments together. Now for the last segment, we stay on the ninth fret, but we're gonna go up to the 10th fret with the pinky. So a little back and forth there. Play the nine again, skip up to the second string, and then down to the third. So here's that last bar. All right, so once again, you wanna string those segments together, and then once you're able to do that, try playing straight through it with me. Now one thing to note is that we're starting right after the one beat. So we'll count two, three, four, one. So notice I didn't start on one, but right after it. All right, now you actually wanna play through that phrase two times in a row. Let's try that. Two, three, four, one. Alright, so let's get into the pre-chorus. So the pre-chorus is basically just one phrase that's played twice. And on your second time through, you change what you play in the very last bar. So here's how it sounds. All right, so let's take a look at how to play this phrase. As you can see, most of the phrase is played on the high E string. Let's take a look at the first bar. So the important thing in this phrase is to get the picking right. We want to use alternate or down up picking when we play this phrase. 
The first thing we'll notice is that we've got a grouping of three fast notes, which are going to play down, up, down. Followed by one downstroke, and then another grouping of three played with down, up, down. So when we put that together, we have down, up, down, 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 up, down. The first thing you want to do is get that picking pattern down. Down, up, down, 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 up, down. Now, if you're not used to down, up, down or alternate picking, you can make it a little easier by substituting that last down, up, down with just two down strokes so that you're only doing one down, up, down triplet at the beginning like this. Down, up, down, 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 down. So one down, up, down, followed by all downs, and that makes it a little easier. Now after you do that, you're going to play two notes, the third fret on the first string, and then the open string. Put that all together, and you have... Now do the exact same thing in the next bar, but instead of doing 3-0 at the end, we're going to do 7-5. Then in the third bar, we do the same thing we did in the first bar. Ending with... So that's our first pass through the phrase. We'll call that phrase 1A. Once you've got it memorized and you've worked through it, try playing along with me. Now when we start this phrase, since there's a rest at the very beginning of the bar, we'll start right after the one beat. So it'll sound like this. Two, three, four, one. All right, so here we go. Two, three, four, one. All right, so now you're just going to play through that phrase a second time, but if you notice in the last bar, we have a different phrase. This is a lead-in phrase. A lead-in phrase is a phrase that brings us into a different section of the song. And in this case, this phrase is going to transition us into the chorus of the song. To play the phrase, you just go back to the seventh position and using the notes of the scale, you play on the top string, transitioning to the second string, 10th fret, 8. Which brings us into the chorus. Now once you've got that down, try playing along with me slow, starting at the beginning of the phrase, working that lead in. Two, three, four. All right, so now let's try to play through this pre-chorus by connecting phrases 1A and 1B. Two, three, four. All right, so let's get into the last section of the song, the chorus. 
So the chorus is very similar to the intro. Here's phrase one. So you'll recognize this phrase from phrase one of the intro. The only difference is that this phrase ends slightly differently. So just like in phrase one from the intro, we start in the seventh position with matching passages. Now we're going to stay on the second string before jumping down to the fourth string ninth fret, and it's here where the phrase changes. We're going to hit that ninth fret note again, and then after that, we're going to jump right over to the sixth fret of the third string. Now we're going to stay on this string, but we're going to shift up to the seventh fret with the first finger. So the first finger is on the sixth fret, shifts up to the seventh fret, and that takes us back into the seventh position, where we're then going to play our last two notes, the ninth fret, and then up to the seventh fret of the second string. Okay, so looking at that last bar, here's how that little passage goes. So as soon as you can get that down, tack that on to the end of the phrase, and then play it along with me. Two, three, four. Alright, now this is going to bring us into the next phrase, but I want to point out that we have an extra 7 at the very end of the last bar here. That's just a lead-in note that's going to take us into phrase 2. Here's phrase 2 with the lead-in note. Now phrase two is very similar to phrase two of the intro. There's only a couple of differences. So we start back in the seventh position. We're on the eighth fret with the second finger just like before. Crossing over to the third string. Jumping up to the second string with the pinky on the tenth fret. And here's the first difference. We're going to play this tenth fret and then we have a triplet. So we're going back and forth between the 10th and the 8th frets before climbing back up to the first string. And then we've got our grouping of three before ending with the lead-in that we used at the end of the pre-course, the exact same lead-in phrase. So once you've worked that all out, Try to play it along with me at a slow pace. Two, three, four. Three, four. All right. Now this takes us back to phrase one. And then our lead-in note taking us back to phrase two. But this time when we play phrase two, we're only going to get about halfway through the phrase. Here's that final run through of phrase one and two at the end of the song. Two, three, four.
All right, welcome to the play along portion of this tutorial. Playing along with the song you're trying to learn is the best way to master it. Don't forget that you can slow the speed of the play along down by clicking the settings tab and then setting your speed to 0.75. All right, we'll make sure that guitar's in tune and let's give this a shot. One, two, three, four. Hey, thanks for joining me for this free guitar tutorial on how to play the opening one theme to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I look forward to seeing you in the next Kids Guitar Academy guitar tutorial.